can you recall ever seeing any news items about the actual events that compliance is based on? Uh, no, not prior to um, not prior to auditioning for the role. Actually, mm-hmm. it was after I got the role that I that Craig sent us some material, and I had a look then. Um, and no, I, I don't know how I missed it, but I did. I, I seem to remember like running across it a, uh, a, a little bit, and so when the when the film. When I saw the film for the first time, you know, I was like, oh, I, I try not to read too much about movies before I see them. Right, so, I, I agree. Uh, uh, so so I was like, oh, yeah, I, I think I've heard of this happening. But, uh, I, of course, I know you were impressed by Craig Vogel's script when you received it, but when you saw it on the page, did this story strike you as one that would engender as much controversy as it, as it obviously has? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't think about it in that way at, at all. I I just thought the script was incredibly well written. The story, of course, very disturbing. And the good news for me is that I thought I understood where this character was coming from, which, of course, mm. you, you know, you never know. Um, it takes a while sometimes, not even if the character is complex or not, just to get a sense of, hey, what am I doing here? What's happening? Um mm-hmm. And, and sometimes you have to spend quite a long time with a script before you get some insight into why a character does what she does. And I, I thought right away something very strong connected for me, and I couldn't even put it into words, but I knew that what he had written was completely playable and very real. Well, I mean, uh, let's talk about the character that you play, Sandra. I mean, she she strikes me as a as a person who's been a little disappointed by life and is sort of clinging desperately to what power and control she still has over certain, uh, over a lot of aspects of her life. Would you see this as a fair assessment of this character, and uh, and it's possibly as a reason that she she does what she does in the film? I think your first statement is right on the money and very well said. Uh, I hadn't heard it that way, but I think that sums it up beautifully. She's deeply disappointed in life, and she doesn't even know it. That's the dangerous part, I think, is that when you are not seeing the rewards of life, and you don't even know you're supposed to be, which I think is her situation, then you act sometimes with a lack of clarity um, and truthfulness because, well, I shouldn't say truthfulness because, to her, it's a very truthful journey, all of it, painfully so. But I think what happened with this character, and you know how actors supply a backstory, and I think the writer here gives us some terrific clues about what her life may have been like or is like now. And that is to say, you know, uh, late 40s, early 50s, unmarried, living with her father. The boyfriend is seeking permission from the father to marry uh, Sandra. That's peculiar right there. Um mm-hmm. I got the impression that her her opinion about things was never particularly valued. In fact, I think it was discouraged, um, you know, having her own voice, her own point of view, very early in her life. And so when that happens, you know, you, you give up your compass. You, you abandon your real sense of self, and you don't even realize you've done it. Uh, so her rewards are external uh, when she pleases someone, Life is going well. Um, when she gets a little, you know, uh, good job from the boss, you know, things are great. Um, when she's not put down, life is going pretty well, if you follow. Her, her, I don't think her expectations are high. I think somewhere in there is that young girl wishing to God something spectacular had happened in her life, but I think... She was told, listen, you're lucky to have what you have and stop it um, early on so that she was just cut short in terms of dreams and aspirations and what would make a good marriage. Um, You know, the more I got to know her, she just sort of broke my heart in a way. Um, I think she really tried. What I would disagree with, though, I suppose it's up to the individual watching, surely, but in playing her... I don't really think she was trying to exert power because she has so little in her life. I don't don't think she's comfortable with power at all. I think she's extremely uncomfortable, um, which is why she slightly panics, I think, when these directives come from this detective uh, 
to do increasingly difficult, more, more and more difficult things that are more invasive and, and, and harder on the girl. And wait a minute here, um, what does corporate say? I mean, shouldn't we have someone else in for a strip search? Well, first of all, a strip search is against the law. There is no corporate policy about that because it's not allowed. So she's reaching, I think, um, to stabilize the situation, and the only way she knows how to do it is to do what she's told to do and do it to the best of her ability. I don't think she wants to punish this girl, or, or even though she was made fun of, I don't think that's how she operates. I think if you're bullied or made fun of, and I imagine she, Sandra has much of her life, either you can be a bully yourself or you don't do anything resembling that. It's too mm-hmm. painful. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think she operates from that place. Well, I think, a, you portray, I think you portray that well because uh, because, uh, because she's always, she is always questioning even even deeper and de- as the film goes deeper and deeper, she does question, but uh, but it's the intrusion of what she thinks is an authority figure coming in that that really keeps her from uh, questioning any further. Exactly, uh, she hears the word detective, and that's it. That's it. That's that's all you need. That's all she needs to know. Uh, you know, I, I I would imagine you really had to put your yourself in the shoes not only of this character but of of anybody who had, who had been a victim of this uh, of this crime. You know, and and there were seventy different instances of this happening all across the country, and uh, they still never really caught the that's guy. That's pretty uh, shocking, it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's just pretty so shocking. I'm, yeah, it is. It's, it's crazy that they haven't caught him either. That's 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 what's also really. No, shocking. they they have caught him. They really have. Uh, oh, or, or they he, have. But have they well, been prosecuted or? Well, they. Here, here's how it went. Um, they did trace him. They did find him. These calls went on for a period of ten years or so, and uh, they did zero in on him. In a, and I think in much in a, in a similar way that they did in the film. Um, the problem was, and he went to court, the problem was the evidence was circumstantial, so he was acquitted by a jury of his peers. Mm. Um, once he was caught, however, the call stopped. Mm. Uh, he did not mm. go to prison. He was not um, convicted of this crime, of these crimes. The boyfriend, um, in the case of our film, even though it's based on a number of stories, he ended up in prison for five years. Uh, as he should have. It was a, a sexual assault. <laughs> mm. um, but the fact that this other guy could have, could be free is, is astonishing. But, again, the burden of proof is high, and we would hope that it would be. But somehow, you know, the savvy, the intelligence of this criminal, uh, mm-hmm. his ability to sum up an individual, to realize who he's talking to and know what their vulnerabilities are and what he needs to say, when he needs to you know, um, compliment and when he needs to slap. Uh, he's, yeah, very, very, very um, brilliant at that. Yeah. Uh, Pat Healy is great in the, in the movie mm. as well. And, and, Isn't he you know, wonderful? In a, just, in, in a just world, he'd, he'd, be, he'd be up for a supporting actor, if you ask me. But, yeah, um, he was, yeah, that's a very hard role, God knows. Um, yeah, I, I mean, especially considering you know he's you know for a lot of the time he's not on screen, but he just totally commands the screen in, in a lot exactly. of ways. Yeah. Uh, what kind of research? I, I don't know what your method of acting is. You know whether whether you're a method actor or whether you just do as as Lars Olivia said, just pretend. You know, so what what kind of research did you do for the role? I mean, the the whole cast seems like they're really part of this world, and I wonder if uh, you had all yes. had some kind of crash course training in the fast food business before you... Before you. Well, I tell you, most actors don't need a crash course because they've lived it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, so I've been a waitress for many, many, many years. I've never mm. done fast food, but I have been in a diner, so that's a similar situation a few mm. times. Um in terms of research, you know, the idea would be to immerse yourself in that world. Not difficult for us because, as I said, we've all been waiters and waitresses. Um, mm. I, as I said earlier, I connected very quickly to her shame. Mm. And I think shame is, is what starts the, the life going downhill in terms of one's own, uh, keeping one's own counsel. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think once, you know, I think that that happens to children uh, without adults even knowing it. Stop talking. Do what I said. I, I don't care what you have to say. Listen to what I said to you. Uh, it's always about deferring. And, and it sounds like she didn't have the most encouraging uh, childhood uh, in, in finding her way. Um, so I, I just sort of thought a lot about that. Um, and I understood it on some level, uh, even though I come from a very loving family, very large family. It was a religious family also, and we were taught very early on to defer to the church without question. And and even if things didn't make sense, that wasn't the point. You know, you were to accept it on faith if you don't understand it. Um, and if you have a constitution that says, you know what, I don't care, I don't, I don't buy it, then you're going to do pretty well. But if you're like Sandra, who doesn't have that... Um, Constitution, who doesn't have the strength to say so what? I don't buy it. Um, you're gonna, you're really going to, you're gonna suffer uh, because you're gonna, you're not gonna even realize you have the right to say no. So I thought a lot about that. Um, I remember it doesn't take much. You're in the environment of a restaurant; it comes back so quickly. Um, the pace, the, the rush, um, you know, feeling like she's already blown it because the freezer wasn't shut. They don't have the proper ingredients. It's a very busy Friday. Um, the boss doesn't and even she, know. She, and, go ahead. And she's she's really put into like a you know the movie begins with her being put into a, a, in in her place so to speak by that delivery guy that comes in. Yeah. You know, who's also another her wonderful so actor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's also another wonderful actor. I re- I recognize him from The Sopranos. I don't have his name at the oh, tip of yes, my tongue. Oh yes, right yes, now. yes, yes. But, um, yeah, the wonderful uh, guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, uh, so so do you do you feel like you know with her with Sandra's uh, you know background do you feel like that kind of erases kind of any kind of culpability she had as someone who keeps this event going? I mean, she's she's not a villain here, even though she's sort of forced well, into know, that role. Well, you know, she is. Well, I mean, aren't we all culpable when we participate in something that harms another? Um, surely we are. She, she, as you know, in the last from the last scene, she felt she was a victim, and she does not have the skills to look at her behavior and say, "I need to change something here. Something is desperately wrong. I participated in this. Uh, somehow, I allowed this to go further, and I better get some help here." You know, uh, whether that would be going to the psychiatrist, doing something to say, "Wait a minute, I've been living my life. I've been driving with my eyes shut most of my life." She doesn't do that. She takes that victim position and holds on to it because I, I think she would fall apart, quite frankly. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. think she would recover. Uh, you know, when you have a catastrophic event, and I would categorize this as catastrophic for her and for, of course, everybody in it, you know, you can have that nervous breakdown and say, what happened to my life? And then you begin to get well. But you've got to break down first, you know? Um, yeah. you, you have to just let it affect you, this, the enormity of it. Yeah, um, you have to feel the grief. or uh, Grief, exactly. Uh, That's a good mm-hmm. way to put it. And you have to say, yeah. I am culpable. I, I have a part in this. Um, she never does. So that, yes, I would say as an outsider, surely she's culpable. I don't think it was conscious. I have tremendous sympathy for her. Um, I, I, I don't think she had a clue that, in fact... She was supposed to say, "Wait a minute, you're a detective. Sorry, I can't help you. If you if you need to um, uh, 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 interview this uh, uh, waitress, you've got to come down here. I, I have to get on with my 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 job. I can't help you. You know that right. ever ever entered her mind. This this film provokes a surprising amount of uh, emotion in its viewers, and I know that uh, it premiered at Sundance uh, and uh, and cost you know, uh, an, an expected ruckus. Uh, were you there for that? And can you tell yeah, us about that? Yeah, I was. I was there. Hey, can you uh, tell I, us about I, that experience? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, it was the premiere. It was at the library, beautiful theater in uh, Sundance. Um, and I had not seen the film on a screen. I had seen it on my computer once. And so I was very involved in watching it. It had been long enough. But it had been, we had done it, you know, there had been a fair amount of time that had gone by, so I had some objectivity, and I was quite, you know, drawn into the to the story. 
And as it was ending, someone started screaming, a woman, and she was screaming that Sundance was better than this and that violence against women was not entertainment. And she was angry and upset, screaming. And then it, that started other people screaming, either in defense of, of the film or or, 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 or their, whatever their point of view was. It, it just suddenly sparked. And some guy was talking about how, you know, she had a lovely body kind of thing. So you knew something was going re- really adrift, meaning <laughs> um, people were triggered. And, mm-hmm. you know, the evidence is that you don't think before you talk. You, you mm. just say things and in anger, in, 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 in whatever. And at first I thought this poor woman, you know, had been triggered and, 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 and possibly been abused herself, you know. Um, she, was, she didn't stay, so I, I never had a conversation with her. But we all, the cast got up and we went to the front, as we were going to do, because you have a little Q&A. And the, one, the moderator was fabulous. He was, um, just took charge immediately and said, you know, this is not a free-for-all, uh, so if you have a comment to make, you can raise your hand. Um, and the one I was very concerned about was Dreema because I think she, she just didn't see that kind of conversation coming. By that I mean that sexual, inappropriate, scary talk. Um, and she's a young, beautiful actress who was obviously has a very vulnerable um, part to play and did so beautifully. And here we are standing up in front of this audience, and I think she was just stunned. But um, mm. one of the other actors, wonderful um, now, I, I'm going to remember her name because I adore her, Ashley Atkinson, who plays the assistant manager. Um, mm, she yeah, just got, she's great in it. Yeah, she's terrific. She got right to it. She just said, listen, if you find, if, if, if seeing a woman without agency uh, turns you on, you, you need to get a little help. Um, she said it better than that, but that was the essence of it. And it, it was kind of, I mean, what's thrilling is that a, 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 a film – would affect an audience like that, where it would, what Craig would want would be conversation and debate, not leaving in anger, but actually expressing your points of view. Um, he's an amazing, well, first of all, he's an amazing writer and director, really he is. so, so good. He's also the nicest man in the world, and he will, without anger and without defensiveness, he will address the issues of this film. I've, I've watched him do it many, many times. Uh, well, of course, I saw, him, I saw him do it at the, at the Atlanta Film Festival, and, uh, you know, I actually had to stand up and say, you know, I just thought this movie was astounding. I, I thought that your uh, – I, I said, I thought your ability to, uh, to actually uh, actually withhold information, just enough information from the audience – uh, at the exact right times, and then release the information was was just perfectly calibrated. And I also, I also yeah, and that's respect. no easy task. Oh my no, god! No, it's not. No, it's not. It's like it's like working on a math problem. And and also, I I said uh, I said you had utmost respect in your audience being able to follow follow with this film. And uh, you know, seeing your parents, you know, in other films, and uh, and you know, just in your in your real life, uh, and then comparing you to Sandra, uh, I'm, I I felt really astonished at the transformation. You know, after I had seen you in another interview uh, oh. with Stephen Holt. I mean, how much input did you have in creating the look of the character? I mean, obviously you had the the well, the good uh, news there is that we have wonderful um, hair, hair and makeup. Like Rondi Scott, who did the makeup and hair, I loved her. And uh, she just had, we had a, she, he had a sense of it, Craig, uh, and mm-hmm. she came up with it right away. Um, I thought, perfect. You know, the costume is straight ahead. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's a, that's a fast. So that was extremely helpful to me. You know, you often, <laughs> I say this and only half in jest. When I'm confused about a character, I know that once I get to the fitting, things are going to clear up a little because the wonderful mm-hmm. designers have um, that astounding ability to put it into the visual, you know, uh, to, to just ex- externalize it for you, um, which, you know, that's not my strength per se. 
at all. So I don't toy with the look. I let someone tell me about that, um, and then I I've learned something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that that's how that happened. Well, uh, now I want to go back here for just a second. You know, we were talking about the emotion that the the movie invokes, but why do you think that it provokes such surprising surprising you know? Uh, jets of anger and uh, and sometimes disapproval well, and sometimes just oh, yeah. absolute like in my case just absolute well man I just get it it's it's right I'm right there with it I get it uh, yeah oh, uh, oh yeah I, I'll tell you why I think it, that happens I think it happens for a number of reasons for those who have been in that situation um, it's so shaming and so uh, humiliating and the rage that accompanies that and there are plenty of women in this world, and not just women, who have been brutalized in uh, many situations. Most, I hope, well, most I'm, I'm assuming are less, are not as extreme as this. But the point is, when you, I think when you see that and you've had similar experiences um, in varying degrees, it produces rage very quickly. And I also think it's extremely painful as a human being to think that we are capable of that behavior. Mm-hmm. And it hits a chord. Um, because that's what I meant when people were just reactive. They, they weren't thinking about wh- wh- what they were going to You know how you, you form a thought? You think about it before you raise your hand, um, especially at a Q&A or, or, or in a public situation. We have people who are just, they just out of comes. You know, they, they were just, what, and we have Psychology Today premiere. They host to the premiere in, in New York. So, you know, you've got a room full of, by and large, pretty smart, one would assume, uh, psychiatrists, um, therapists, whatever, that, that world who, who's used to looking at human behavior and putting into words what is going on. One woman just said, you know what, this is an IQ issue. That woman is just plain stupid. And uh, I, I cannot believe that this could ever happen to anyone with half a brain. She just went off. Now, that's just blatantly not so. Yeah, so that's correct. It's not so. I mean, factually, you know, and then some other guy said, well, uh, it, I'll tell you right now, that could never happen in a city. And so Craig said, well, Boston, for one, that that's a city. I mean, he wasn't sarcastic about it. But people just don't want it to be true um, that human beings are capable of cruelty, of of stupidity, of lack of sensitivity, and of, of a willingness to just defer to the authority present. Um, I think that is it, it, something that people abhor. Um, and to think they could ever be involved. You can't imagine that any of the, those people in that room, all of them said they would never do anything like that. Oh, yeah. So, everybody everybody said that, too, in, in the screening I was in. And I, and I said, no, you, I, 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 I was talking to a few of them afterwards. I said, it could happen to any one of us. It could happen to any one of us if we were in that particular situation. Uh, you know, IQ doesn't play a role. It really uh, – but there, there would be – I would say this, that, that there is there, – there would be a certain sense of uh, – I I said that that I was raised with a sort of, sort of uh, sort of suspicious eye at anybody who was coming into the door to sell me anything or anything yeah. like that. So so I think I think that kind of that kind of IQ might figure in there. You know, sort of a right, street right. smart sort of thing. There but, you go. Uh, yes. But uh, but but you know IQ doesn't doesn't enter into it. it, it it's really sort of no. you know, a, 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 maybe an EQ, <laughs> maybe an emotional question, but not an uh, not an intelligence question. Um, well, when we when we brought the film to to the festival to Deauville uh, in France, so, you know the French are amazing about film. They have tremendous respect for film, and they're very vocal about it. And I, I, I was quite impressed by the you know. But they're just very uh, supportive. Uh, but but someone said in an interview, do you think of this as an American phenomenon? And I thought to myself, are you joking? You know, Nazi Germany, should we start there? You know, uh, yeah. this notion, I mean, if that isn't a classic example. Um, because if you say to yourself, could you ever shove a child or, or any human being, could you ever do any of those things? That are done that were done 
during World War II, and and I find it hard to believe. Um, but but it happened, didn't it? It certainly you know? did, and, 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 it was uh, an, and, and that was another that was another function of people not questioning. You know, not exactly not taking a stand and saying, "I will not do this." Mm-hmm. I don't care what you do. I mean, I oh, God. You know, and 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 Vichy and so many. You know, it, it's just fascinating because when the question is asked, and it was asked by a young reporter, it's just interesting because that just proves the point, doesn't it? Just the lack of awareness um, that such a thing could ever happen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I so I don't know to... if that answered your question about. Um, no, no, it, uh, that's that's a that's a great like a, that's a great analogy, and that just says it all right there. I mean, uh, now I want to jump to the award season in which Magnolia has uh, uh, has declined to put up an Oscar campaign for this film, which, which is a complete mystery to me. I mean, even though Variety has been handicapping both your performance and Craig's script as players all throughout. Season, uh, yeah. So, so their their uh, their refusal to provide screeners for uh, for Academy members was very strange, and I and I know that you and your family had reached into your own pockets to to provide screeners for Academy members to and it, and it took a lar- large amount of money, much more money than you got paid for the performance. Can you can you talk about can you talk about that I mean, why, why do you think that Magnolia, you know, didn't get behind this film? Uh, do you think they well, feel like they had a hot potato on their hands and they didn't really know what to do with it? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, I don't. I can't. I won't speak for them. I can't. I don't really know. Um, really, anyone there? They've been pleasant to me and and so on. Um, they're a small company, and the reason they gave early on was that they did not have the financial resources to um, mount such a thing. So I don't. Um, that's that's their uh, you know that's their point of view. And to me, it was a no-brainer. I I just said, well, then I, I'll do it. You know, this is a a, a wonderful chance. Um, a, a film I love. I think it's a terrific film. Um, I, I would love people to see it. I felt really honored to get the part and play her, and then to have gotten positive response has been really extraordinary. There was no bitterness um, or anger or oh, what. At all, I just—it's just a very practical thing, you know. I'm gonna—I have fortunately I could borrow from friends, or we put some on a credit card. You know, lucky me. That's really the way I look at it. I don't comment on on um, Magnolia in any way because, I, you know, I don't know. I just take them at their word. They said they don't have the money. That's the way that is, and that's—I mm-hmm. didn't pause on that for. Uh, and I've had really some wonderful people helping me. Um, you know, Jerry Schmidt, Schmidt has helped me tremendously. He's a Terrific publicist, and Stephen Holt kindly has helped me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, Scott Feinberg couldn't have been nicer or more uh, supportive, and just sort of decoding this whole process for me, which I, I was fairly clueless about. So, to mm. be honest with you, I, I I just didn't dwell on that at all. That was the reality, mm. and I quickly moved moved on. That was the correct way to handle it. That's true. Uh, I mean, you know, you definitely had, you know, not only Scott Feinberg, a Hollywood reporter, but Entertainment Weekly has come out on in, in your behalf. And, and just recently, uh, yesterday, uh, Backstage uh, wrote an article. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, how lovely you know. is that? I'm just blown <laughs> away. I'll tell you, Dean, I am blown away by the whole thing. And I'll tell you, the whole, all of it is positive. Um, it, it's like coming to... Uh, I don't know. The, I, I, I just, I just feel, I feel wildly fortunate and excited. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's what you dream for as an actor. You, you mm-hmm. want to do wonderful roles, and then you want to be recognized for them, and then you want to work with great people. Uh, you know, that's all a win for me. Um, mm-hmm. The rest of it, I don't dwell on for two seconds. You know, right. uh, at all. I, I, I just. It'll all work out. That's my philosophy about life. It'll all work out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, whether or not the Oscar nomination happens, so this role has already changed your career. I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, you're you're obviously going to be in demand a, a lot more, and, and I think, you know, uh, and uh, and not. I mean, you you've, you've been steadily working for, like I said, for for uh, decades now. So uh, so. 
you know, obviously you're going to you're you're benefiting from all this attention. Uh, and, hey, that's uh, the great thing too about you know when you get older, like I'm not in my twenties, you know, I have some perspective. I've I've clocked mm-hmm. a number of hours working, and that's a very steadying um, thing. Work, uh, it's what we want, you know. Um, how do you? I, yeah. Let me ask you this: what, How do you feel? How do you feel the industry is going in terms of providing uh, providing great roles like Sandra for uh, for uh, women of a certain age? You know, women women who are over yeah. their forties. Well, yeah, think I, it's getting my better, thought on that. Or? Well, I, you know, again, I don't know because I'll tell you the truth. When I first read this script, I thought, well, they must have cast this part. Some star must be playing this role because it's a fabulous part. Uh, because I'm not privy to, or haven't been, let's say, to um, roles of that size prior to this. So I don't know about that, but my thinking on it is the roles will come. They'll be written for women, do you know? That, mm-hmm. that I think, you look around at the women directors, the wonderful writers, the actresses, it can't go anywhere but up, in my opinion. 